Welcome to the Yahaha Essentials Tutorial Series. My name is Chris, or you may know me better online as Chulu Longhorn. I'm here today with Yahaha doing these quick tutorials to show you how to set up the basics in your space. Today, we'll be going over triggers. With triggers, we can set off all sorts of interactivity in our scenes, allowing us to create exactly the gameplay we want with the exact timing we need to make our spaces fun and exciting. To demonstrate triggers, I've selected the Forest Ruins Park Template. It gives us a number of objects we can easily utilize to show off how triggers work. Triggers are important for activating gameplay in our spaces. We use the various types of triggers to activate almost every interactive element in a space. More importantly, they pair with various elements within our spaces, allowing us to choose exactly when and how our interactive events happen in relation to our players. Game events and their triggers are a match made in game designer heaven. Let's start by taking a look at the different types of triggers and their activation conditions. In Yahaha, we have three different trigger types, spheres, boxes, and capsules. Spheres are good whenever you want to trigger something in a specific radius. Boxes are the most common and are generally used to cover areas or groups of objects. And capsules are perfect when you have cylinder-shaped objects like trees or posts you want to use to trigger events. Let's add a box trigger just so we can look at the functionality of the trigger box. Clicking on the trigger in the trigger box lets us visualize the trigger and its handles. We can show or hide all triggers by changing the visibility, or we can turn individual triggers on and off. If we click on one of the center or size letters, we can drag or change the value and the trigger's position or size. We can also enter specific numbers for the values to get the exact size or position we want. Clicking on the trash can will remove the trigger. We can do this with any trigger, allowing us to interactively place and size it. To activate our journey into triggers, we will begin with the simplest form of triggering to set up, and that's triggering something when the space loads and gameplay starts. To demonstrate this, we'll use the pillar here and have it slowly rise out of the ground when play begins. First, we need to move it into the ground, so let's set its Y position to negative 3.3 so that it looks like a decorative stone. Next, we add the move component to it and double check that its trigger condition is set to on start, which should be the default. Finally, we'll set the relative position stay time to zero so that it starts moving immediately and set the relative position point to 3.3 and move speed to 0.5 so that it rises slowly to its full height. Triggering things on start ensures that they activate as soon as the player enters the space. Okay, let's keep things firing and generate the next type of trigger, one that trips when the player touches it. For this, we'll utilize this cage over here. First, make the cage big enough for the player. Notice how resizing the cage also resizes its child object, the cage gate. Okay, now let's set the gate rotation Y to 100. Note the gate's handle position. This kind of positioning allows for the gate to rotate around its hinges, which is something to keep in mind when you're looking for assets to use in your scenes. All right, let's add a rotate component to the gate and set its rotation settings type to arc, direction to anti-clockwise, angle to 100, and time to five, so the gate closes at a regular pace. Now for the trigger. On the rotate component, set its trigger object to others and click on the condition box. In the pop-up, set the object to the cage and the condition to touched by player. Notice how doing this automatically adds a trigger component to the cage and sets it up how we need it. Since the player triggers the gate to close when they touch the cage, we could use it to trap an unsuspecting player. We could also use this type of trigger to set up a switch that triggers something else in our space, like a door or an elevator. Now, driving forward again, let's take a look at setting up an object trigger to set off a component we add to the object. We'll select the fence gate over here and add a trigger of type sphere to it. Due to the offset handle here as well, we'll have to reposition the trigger to get it where we want it. Let's offset the trigger's center and set its radius to three. 
Now we have a trigger area around the object. Next, we want to add the rotate component on the object. Setting its trigger condition to on enter, its rotation settings type to arc, its angle to 100, its time to two, and its looping mode type to two way. And boom! We've set up a radius around the gate that when entered by the player from any angle will open the gate automatically. Cool. Launching into our final piece here, let's create a separate trigger object which can activate a component or another object. I've set up this fence here to act as a sort of gate blocking the player's progress. To allow it to open as the player approaches, let's set up an empty object here and add a box trigger to it, placing it across this area so the player must pass through it. Now we need to add the move component to the fence. Set the trigger object to others and open the condition pop-up, setting the object to the gate trigger we created earlier and the condition to on exit. Just like the cage, notice how setting a trigger condition in this way adds a trigger component to the gate trigger and configures it to work with the move component we just set it up from. Finally, we'll set the relative position stay time to zero and the relative position Y coordinate to three. Now, once the player exits the gate trigger area, the fence rises out of the player's way, acting like a gated portcullis. How very medieval. As you can see, Triggers are a great way to fire off interactivity in our spaces. They can not only be used to activate components in a scene, as I've demonstrated today, but can also interact with quests and dialogues to get all sorts of awesome gameplay. We'll go over all that coolness in later videos. That's all for this tutorial, but we still have several more elements to cover, so don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be notified when we post more Yahaha Essentials Tutorials. Also, be sure to visit us on Discord and in the forums to discuss space creation. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all again soon.